U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken sees Uganda's new anti-LGBTQ legislation in the same negative light and has declared that it undermines fundamental human rights of the individuals involved. Anthony Blinken called on the Ugandan government to reconsider implementing it. The hastily passed bill states that anyone identifying as LGBT could face a long prison sentence. Individuals belonging to organizations supporting minority rights could also go to jail. The legislation goes much further than Uganda's existing laws which ban homosexual activity. To become law, it needs to be signed by President Yoweri Museveni, who is known for his unbending stance against LGBTQ rights groups and opposition politicians say the bill promotes homophobia and transphobia. Joining us now to discuss the international furore being generated by the anti-LGBTQ bill in Uganda and why it is so is a rise analyst, Mark Pichachi. Mark, thanks for joining us on Newsday. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So any response from the Ugandan government on what the U.S. is saying about this bill? It's warned that there could be economic sanctions if President Museveni signs the anti-gay bill into law. Well, there's been no official reaction as at this point, uh, but the controversy is quite interesting, given that it is the American right that has been funding a lot of anti-gay uh, propaganda and parliamentarians to come up with this particular law. It is still the same Americans that are now on the left who are trying to stop the, 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 the law. So this is an American battle being fought on Ugandan soil, and we we are waiting to see what uh, President Museveni would do. But I must say that it is expected that Museveni will sign this bill given his um, quite uh, open anti-LGBTQ uh, stance that he has had for quite a while. And it's interesting that you talked about that. That has been mentioned quite a bit about the uh, Republican U.S. activist uh, groups and the evangelical groups that have heavy presence uh, in the country for years and have been promoting uh, this rhetoric for a while. But another uh, criticism is the fact that uh, a bulk of the country's uh, aid uh, from the U.S. goes to the health sector. Now, are there fears that if um, sanctions are implemented, that the health sector could see a drastic decline, especially in uh, the HIV AIDS crisis, which I know is a huge battle uh, on that, uh, in that sector? Uganda is a least developed country and it does depend on a, a lot on foreign aid and let's remember that if the Americans do decide to pull aid then you expect that the EU will also full, follow suit. So it is a danger for the economy of Uganda if there are such sanctions will be put. But also remember that this is not just a Ugandan issue it is also going to be a regional issue because uh, traditionally the East African region has had a uh, don't ask, don't tell, don't see uh, attitude towards the LGBTQ community. And it is true that uh, many of our cons uh, our communities are quite conservative. Um, therefore, will the uh, sanctions uh, and removal of aid by the Americans be treated as fair by the people of Uganda and the East African community remains to be seen. So it might not be as straightforward as that uh, because uh, let's not forget that the conservative society in Uganda is uh, largely anti-LGBTQ as it is in Kenya and most of, of Eastern Africa. So it is a deeper issue. It is not just going to boil down to uh, aid, but yes, aid is an issue. And if it is withdrawn, then you would expect that the country of Uganda would suffer quite a bit. Now, Mark, a previous attempt to impose a life sentence in prison on people involved in homosexual activities was struck down by the Supreme Court in 2014. So are we likely to see this go through the same legal route? Oh, yes, uh, definitely. You expect that it would go to the Ugandan Supreme Court. Uh, if that fails, they will go to the East African Court of Justice. Uh, this is not something that the Ugandan um, LGBTQ activists will take a lying down. Indeed, they have been very vocal over the years and they have uh, managed to stay out 
of uh, of such extreme measures by the government but as you can see now the government will continue to push and the lgbtq defenders uh in uganda both uh, from within and outside that country will continue to stand against it but it is also expected uh given the segregatory nature upon which such laws are practiced that it will be struck down again but uh, before then if uh, president museveni does sign this into law then the lgbt community in Uganda would be in danger. And we know what the uh, government officials in Uganda feel and the parliamentarians as well, but uh, the average uh, Ugandan, I'm wondering how this plays out to them, especially if they're not um, a part of the LGBTQ uh, community, if they uh, have any pushback or if they're all in agreement that these laws should be enacted. Well, that's an interesting question, and, and that goes back to the demographics of Uganda and much of the region. Those who are more rural and conservative are definitely against the LGBTQ community. They uh, uh, shun such acts and such people. But to, when you go towards the more urban liberal centers, uh, such as Kampala, then you find a lot more tolerance for the LGBTQ community. You find a lot more acceptance. So th that is how it is. The more urban, the more affluent people are, the more likely they are to support the LGBTQ, the more rural and conservative they are, the more likely they are to be anti-LGBTQ. Uh, and, and let's remember that these matters have also been deeply uh, turned into a religious question. So those who are re religious, whether it be it Muslim or majority Christian, as it is in Uganda, then it is taken as an abomination uh, before their religion. So that is where the matter really sits, that a lot of people think that this is uh, uh, wrong. Now, some gay rights activists have accused the Ugandan government of using the bill as a ploy to distract the public from its failures to address some of their pressing economic concerns. Is there any marriage to this? Is this priority right now in Uganda, this bill? Well, for sure, given the weight of issues facing Uganda, the anti-LGBTQ law is not a priority, not in the list. Um, however, it is a topic that every time it is brought up, the whole country begins a conversation. Uh, they forgot the issues of uh, corruption, the long dictatorship of Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. They forget um, the mistreatment of opposition leaders and focus on this particular issue. So yes, is it a, a useful political tool? Uh, for distracting the public, yes, it is. Uh, but it is—is is it also an issue that the public is interested in and is invested in and discusses all the time? That is also true. Um, so Uganda has to find a balance, uh, and and I don't think uh, dealing with the LGBTQ issue in the way they have imagined it here will change the fortunes of the Ugandan people in any way, shape, or form. Well, Mark Pichachi, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining our conversation on Newsday this afternoon.